So recently, we actually got Ahsoka on Disney+, Plus, which I personally believe is one of the best series so far. One of the best series so far that has to do with, you know, Star Wars and everything that comes with it. And it tells a fantastic story, and we haven't finished it yet, we haven't gotten to the end of it, but with the episodes that we have so far, it's actually been nailing a lot of the best things that Star Wars has to offer. And once the season ends, I'll actually go and actually talk about it right here on this channel. So just to be reminded, go ahead, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified when that video goes live on this channel. But today we are actually taking a step back and we are gonna be talking about season three, season three of The Mandalorian. And I know it's a season that actually encompasses a lot of different things that people liked and people didn't quite like. But today I'm gonna to share with you my thoughts as to what I think worked and what didn't work this season of The Mandalorian. So for us personally, people who have been watching The Mandalorian from the very beginning, such as myself, season three kind of threw a rock or a wrench into kind of, you know, the whole storyline that people are used to. Now, for me, I don't find it as a bad thing that we actually got to see, you know, a different sort of Mandalorian story in season three. I think it was a good idea because we actually got to see more of who the Mandalorians actually are. And in that retrospect like looking back at the season i think that they did a lot of little things like telling us who the mandalorians are i think they did that really good sort of storyline for us to understand who they actually are and you know looking at what we are hearing now in ahsoka listening to you know how sabine really doesn't fit in with Jedi's because she's very Mandalorian, very strict, has a very focused mindset that you really can't, you know, jitter around. You can't really be flexible in that way. But listening to that and actually thinking about what we see in season three of The Mandalorian kind of adds up to what we are experiencing now. So season three really did a great job of explaining to us who the Mandalorians are and really setting up a story and a solid foundation for them. And I can't help but congratulate, you know, the whole team at Disney and Lucasfilm for actually making a season that was very diverse. You know, the different storylines that we got throughout this season were very diverse and being able to see how these little pieces kind of added up in the end really kind of paid off. And, and that last episode that we got, you know, seeing kind of Moff Gideon's end in a way was very interesting and intriguing and finding out that, you know, they were producing more Moff Gideons in the process is kind of wild. And, you know, getting that understanding down uh, really sets up something interesting for the next Mandalorian season uh, if we have a next season for Mandalorian because the last I heard they were trying to make a Mandalorian movie which encompasses everything that has happened you know up till this point and explaining you know Grogu's journey and actually getting a solid story down for a movie for the Mandalorian so I don't know, I think that they might do a fourth season rather than just do a movie and be lazy about it. But I think they did a fairly good job in making this whole season very diverse. And we can't help but not talk about the incredible cameos we got this season. Now, this actually bugged a lot of people off, I get it. Not a lot of people expected these cameos in this show, but I think that the cameos that they did put in this show 
were fun. I think they were kind of funny. I think that it was lighthearted. I, I didn't see any sort of malice in putting these cameos on the show. So having an episode where you get three completely different people in the show that are famous and well known and are now like part of Star Wars narrative is very interesting. You know, you have Jack Black and Lizzo, which I think are a very interesting pair. It's not a pair that I would think of right off the top of my head, but I think that that was an interesting pair to put on the show that are famous and are well known in, you know, now in pop culture in general. You know, those are two people who are very well known in pop culture. And then on top of that, but in the same episode, you have Christopher Lloyd. I mean, Christopher Lloyd, the guy from Back to the Future. I mean, he is amazing. And just having him in the Star Wars universe as like a nice little cameo is awesome. I think it's it's a great idea to just put people in there that are just fun. They're just fun little cameos. They're not, you know, super important characters to begin with. So I don't think that it should be a really sort of like divisive thing. I mean, if you're taking the fact that Lizzo and Jack Black are part of Star Wars now as a big deal, then I'm sorry, you're way off, okay? Just like, it's something to have fun with, and I think they pretty much nailed the actual people to actually put on the show because they're so different in a way. And I just can't wait to see who else they have in store for cameos in the future. So when it comes down to things that I kind of didn't like this season, uh, it comes down to two big things that I think really irritated me this season. And mm, these things are like gripes. I feel like they're minor, but they're kind of big gripes in a way. It's kind of confusing, but they kind of irked me a little bit when I thought of them you know, going back in my brain and thinking, hmm, why did they do that? And it doesn't ultimately have to do with the story itself, but it has to do more with the pacing of the story. You know, when you think of a series in which you have a limited number of episodes, you expect that each episode is going to put in a new sort of additional fact or a new piece to a puzzle in which you have to fix and this season i feel like they sprinkled too many filler episodes into the show i mean you're supposed to have you know a set number of episodes right like for example if you have say eight episodes right you should be able in those eight episodes to make one very complete story, a complete arc in which people are going to be able to be like, okay, this character started in point A. A lot of stuff happened here, a lot of messes, a lot of little things happened. And then point B should be where we land in the story. And if we don't have a sort of a landing with a story, if we don't end that arc in a way, the story becomes flat, you know, it just becomes one noted. If the character in which you, you know, follow along these journeys from point A to point B did not have a significant change, hmm, so what kind of story are we trying to tell here? And I feel like that's one of the gripes that I have with this season of The Mandalorian. And my second gripe that I have with this season is the fact that, like I said, shows that are of limited episodes need to have the content to back it up. And what I feel like is that if you have a lot of filler episodes and they're all little 30 to 40 minute episodes, that becomes a very boring and tedious process. You know, and I get why they are doing it. They don't want 
to create something that is going to be gone in just one day. Like, people are going to be talking about The Mandalorian in one day, and then two, three days later, they're not going to be talking about it anymore because they don't want anybody binging the show. But I feel like if you're going to do something similar to this, if you're going to put out episodes that are really short, I would suggest at least two episodes a week. If you have, say, ten episodes, you're going to have five weeks of content to actually put out to people. And that's a great thing, because ultimately, you're going to be giving people over an hour of content every week. And to me personally, if you don't want to run into this problem, then you make your seasons slightly shorter. So instead of 10 episodes or 8 episodes, you make them 6 episodes. But don't make your 6 episodes 30 to 40 minutes long. Make your episodes at least an hour in length and have people watch something that's long and fulfilling that fills people and grows the story. So ultimately, that is a major gripe I have with season three of The Mandalorian. Now, one thing I forgot to mention beforehand is the inclusion of Bo-Katan this season. And I really do believe that Bo-Katan is probably the biggest character in this season. Uh, the Mandalorian, our original Din Djarin, you know, OG man, kind of takes a back seat this season. And we get to explore more of Bo-Katan's story, you know, what she lost, her grief, and being able to understand who she is and seeing her, you know, get out of this place, this, this sort of like lonely place that she was in and kind of build trust and a, a, a kinship with Din Djarin. And I really do believe that this season is Bo-Katan's season. You know, season three of The Mandalorian is not just Din Djarin's show, it's Bo-Katan's show as well. And this is a great opportunity to be able to grow that story. Like I said, one of the main things this show is doing is growing this Mandalorian storyline for us to understand who the Mandalorians actually are. And I think that Bo-Katan really held her own in this season and pretty much projected what it is and what it means to be Mandalorian and everything that went through with her, you know, having to go back to Mandalore, bathe in the waters of Mandalore, and, and then tell the armorer that she actually saw one of the Mandalores, like the OG beasts that the Mandalorians actually look up to, is, you know, breathtaking in that sense, that holy cow. She can now walk both lines as both Mandalorian and someone who can actually remove their helmet because as we learn on the show, if you've removed your helmet, you kind of lose your identity as a Mandalorian. You know, you have to keep your helmet on if you want to continue being Mandalorian. So this whole storyline that we get with Bo-Katan this season was very interesting and will definitely be something that we could look forward to in the future. So that's mainly what I thought of season three of The Mandalorian. I believe that this season was very divisive in many ways. There's a lot of things that I didn't like about the season and a lot of things I didn't like about the season. Now, I could go on for a longer period of time and talk more about the things that I actually liked, but I decided to focus on, you know, a select number of things that I actually think about when I think about season three of The Mandalorian. And I think that there are, you know, solid things this season that could really affect the future of The Mandalorian as a show or even as a movie as they decide what they want to do with The Mandalorian after this season. And if you think I am correct about my presumptions of this season, Go down in the comments below. Tell me what you think of the season. Do you think the season was well worth the watch? Do you think is it's a skip? Or who knows? Maybe you think something completely out there and different than I do. Go ahead and leave that in the comments below and let's start this discussion right now. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when new videos go live on this channel. 
and thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.